When we arrived uh, on South Street, <clears throat> the front of the structure, the South Street side of the structure was a corner, restaurant was um, heavy smoke coming from the structure and it was pressurized smoke chugging from, from all openings. Um, as we made our way to the um, Bravo side of the building, which is South Street side, because command set up on 7th, um, I instructed my crew to put ladders up to the front of the building that we were not going to make entry because there was yet to be water on the fire and it was um, dark pressure smoke um, coming from the structure. At that moment, uh, one of the citizens that was standing there had said that she believes the cook was still inside. So the change of plans was I was going to go in and make a search of the structure. I ordered my crew to stay outside and continue throwing ladders in the front while I made entry. Um, as I made entry, uh, I was met with extreme heat, very intense. I had to step back outside to readjust my PPE, and then I made entry again. When I made entry, it was a cafe. Um, there was a lot of debris in front of me. Uh, I made a slight left and was somewhat unimpinged by anything behind the bar. Um, it was at this moment when I realized that the conditions inside the structure were uh, near flashover um, because of the extreme heat. I couldn't see any fire, um, but again, the heat was just so intense that uh, I thought for a moment that I was gut checking myself to go back out. But in the process, I just continued further into the structure. Um, it was at this moment that I reached a doorway that led off to the rear of the structure. It was chopped up into three sections. Um, it was this room that was heavily involved in fire. Uh, I had come to face-to-face uh, -to -face with Engine 11's stream. They were beginning their fire attack. Uh, I realized I was in the flow path because I could feel it. So I switched from search mode to I need to get out of here fast. So I turned, and when I turned, I felt an opening, uh, a pretty large opening. And in, in my disorientation at this moment, I thought that that was a wall that I was gonna follow out and exit the structure on the 7th Street side. However, it was an entry into the basement with a steep stairwell, and the void space was the stairs leading up to the apartments. So I took what can be described as a very confident step forward and went airborne down the stairs. I somersaulted down the stairs and landed upside down, dislodged my mask, and I started to lose air. So when I reoriented and got back and readjusted my PPE, I thought, I'll just scramble up the stairs and they'll be all right. So I crawled forward and I hit a wall. Realizing that wasn't the stairs, I just turned and calmly went forward again and hit another wall. So I said, okay, this is odd. Turned, crawled a little further, ran into another wall said, okay, now I'm definitely not near the stairs. Let's re-evaluate the situation and, and kind of try to get out of here. It wasn't too long after that that my, all of a sudden my vibro alert went off. Now when this went off, uh, that was a, a, a moment there where I, I, it was kind of an oh, uh oh moment. Um, said, I'm, I'm disoriented in this basement. I can't find the way I came down and now my vibro alert's going off, great. So I said, I need help. I remember thinking in my head, I need help. Let's go for it. I hit the button and declared a mayday. Um, went ahead and said, mayday, mayday, mayday. Ladder two officer, I'm in the basement. I've fallen into the basement. Ladder two officer, I'm in the basement. I'm down into the basement. I said it pretty calm. Um, and I, I felt like I collected my thoughts. Uh, and then I proceeded to kind of move forward a little bit. I didn't get any answer and I just heard other radio traffic. So I did it again. And I said, ladder two officer, I'm in the basement. Um, at this time, battalion four's aide answered me and I thought, okay, well, he heard me. In hindsight, talking to him later on, he did not, he was just, he was addressing the, the emergency activation. So I th thought to myself, I'll come over and I'll paint a picture where I'm at. I came over and I said, I'm on a right-hand search pattern and I'm on the wall on the right-hand side. Communication, Snoker 2's off. Thank you, officer. 
So I started moving forward with that, realizing I'm going, I can't be going the right way. I turned around and started going the other way. Um, you know, and I, I never came back over and said I was going the other way now. Um, I did not know this, but at the time, Rescue One was, was converging on the Bilko doors on the 7th Street side. Um, they had heard the mayday, and they had their search team go ahead and start working on getting the Bilko doors open. Rescue one officer to search. We need to get the search team in the basement. That's affirmative. We can enter the basement from the outside. Shortly after that, that um, you know, when the Bilko doors opened, there was a brief lift in the in the smoke, and I happened to be facing the right direction for the corridor of the stairs I came down. Um, I remember my vibro alert was slowing down. It was really kind of just chirping at that moment. And I scooted up the stairs. The conditions upstairs were much different than they were when I left. Um, they had water on the fire. The, um, smoke had lifted. There were more people up there. But I just kind of brushed by every one of them to get outside. Charlie, the rescue one officer. Rescue one officer. All right, the members outside. Just give me a good check of that face as well. Affirmative. I got medium smoke in the face. Um, and then we continue with the job after that. Uh, you know, I got outside, I reoriented myself, everybody realized we were okay, and we went on doing our job. We went back to the station and we kind of debriefed. We had a lot of new guys on, on, in the company and on that job, and I wanted to really kind of say, you know, this is, this is what happened. So I gave them, you know, my bullet points. Um, and it was really good that we did that debriefing because it was great training. The chief had asked me a really important question, and the question still sticks to me right at this moment is, you know, what was your goal? What was your game plan when you made entry into that structure? And to be honest, I can honestly say I didn't have one. I heard that somebody was inside and I was like, I'm going to hard charge into this place and I'm going to search for somebody. I'm going to find them and I'm going to pull them out. Well, that really wasn't realistic. Uh, I made my way into conditions that were unlivable to somebody, definitely not in gear. And now they were starting to teeter tot on me not being able to live in them. So, you know, I didn't have the game plan and I kind of, need to reevaluate that. Uh, they, they, we briefly discussed how all the um, chatter on the radio for an, uh, on an incident of that magnitude can be very confusing. And knowing that only a handful of people heard the Mayday go off, um, I can't say that it doesn't sit well. It's just the way that they go. We need to work on that. But I want to pass on to if, if you're just a firefighter standing in front of Bravo 3 and you hear a Mayday go over the radio, you need to start making sure that people are hearing that. You know, the whole fire ground should change, the dynamic. We still need to get water on the fire, but at that moment, there's somebody asking for help, and that help needs to be delivered. Um, fortunately enough, obviously, the right people heard it, and, you know, we're here talking about it today, so that's good, but, you know, it may not always go like that. Um, and the third point uh, to pass on to definitely the new generation and, and even the older generation of, of firefighters, you know, when you realize that you're in, in trouble um, and you need help, call for it. If I had hesitated any longer, I mean, who knows, when I got outside, my mask was already sticking to my face. So I really didn't have that many breaths left.